Hey, it's starting. And you know what this means, you guys? I don't know. But is the intro going over us right now? Or did they? It is right now. You know why, Bob? We are on our podcast. <laughs> Look who's <I> back. <laughs> hey, that was I, good, I wondered, Susan. But our, our, right now above us is it? Is, so sit back and uh, from all walks of life, is our intro going at the same time? I don't know. It is. It is. The cows are mooing. The coins in the field. The springtime has sprung. Hey, Susan. Those are the best cows I've ever heard. We can put the cow thing to rest. Because you know why? Because they went on this amazing Buddhist retreat and they came back like this. Like, it'll be like that every time now, y'all. Oh, that's awesome. That's good news. I just want to chime in here and second what Paul just said. That was a, a warm, that cow had a warmth to it, an, an invitation. I'm so excited. Yeah, so like I want to be in that barn. All right, hey guys, we got May oh. Pang coming on the show today. May oh, Pang, oh my god, from the John Lennon weekend of uh, survival. You well, know, can I just uh, can I synopsis the audience for those? Who please do. Maybe but, we're Beatle fans, but back in the Beatle days, around. I just want to. I want to oh. just preface your your talk, Bob, with Bob just spent a weekend with May Pang, but not in the Wait, John what? Lennon way. <laughs> but he actually, Bob Castle Band played for May's party after they had a, a viewing of the movie. Everybody went to the Troubadour where, oh, John was off the hook. And uh, and they actually had a show right there, all Beatles songs, and everybody was there. Uh, there was uh, Elliot from the Cars was there, right? And uh, of course, Vicky May was and there. John were there. And, Vi- and Johnny was there, and Vicky was there. And, and Robbie so Bob, Sharp so was there. Bob's going to let you know. Tell us all about Bob. No, I just want you to know when we say May Pang. Okay, back in the 70s, the Beatles were oh, okay. huge. They broke up. And John Lennon's having his solo career. And he's hooked up with Yoko. Roko, Yoko has broken up the Beatles. And believe it or not, Yoko and John are not getting along. And Yoko's solution is that she tells John Lennon he needs to hook up with their secretary, our guest, May Pang, and go with him and be with him because John likes her. He thinks he's attracted to her. And Yoko Ono thinks that May Pang, this will be good for John Lennon. Now, what she thought would be good for John Lennon is going to last 18 months, and May Peng and John Lennon are going to be hooked up, and the story is going to be wild, and it is awesome, and it is here with May. And that's just a little quick history of the backdrop of. of that's, a, that's a lot. That's a lot. But I got a little something I want to say. Here's the thing they were separating. We're going to talk to May. They were separating, and she knew. When they separated, he was going to go date somebody else. So rather than it be somebody that she doesn't know, some you know what out there trying to gold dig, lure, 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 she must have, she trusted May and she was like, he's going to do it with somebody, do it with her. That's how wow. I, May will clarify. Paul looks like he knows. And May can cry. Well, I do know one little tidbit there was that John did tell, tell Yoko <laughs> that he thought that May was sexy and, you know, intimated uh, how that would be fun to do <laughs> now now we understand we understand that most women at that what paul just said would just be a gas run for the hills like slap the person i don't know whatever oh yes yes but this is not those people and those this isn't for everyone <laughs> unbelievable and I, I y'all that was the times i got a friend he always likes to say Hey man, anything we did back then that's maybe less than what we should have been. He always goes, "Hey man, we were hippies." <laughs> it's his excuse. Oh, for okay. Oh, good times, good times. You know, I picture Yoko Ono in the office because she's the receptionist, I guess, or the same. I, I picture her at her desk in the office, and May Pang walks by, and Yoko's going, "God, I gotta find somebody for John." Holy mackerel! And then May Pang walks by again, and she probably looks and says, "Man, May." And she, I want to know, did you go to John? She went to work for them. May's going to clear it up. We can't speculate like this. This That's right. That's right. Fans have waited a long time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're burning with questions. And she does have a couple of books out, her memoirs. um, And so I guess there's a lot of salacious uh, stuff in there. Doggy. But yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. And we're good friends with May. We're good friends with May. And so uh, it's a a lot of tongue in cheek with us, actually. Yeah, yeah, no. Listen, we've all been down the same roads together. And May's our pal. We are so happy that she's coming in. It'll be hilarious and fun. Yeah, man. Um, Right. But but, but look, y'all, guys, let's get some, let's collect ourselves here. We need to talk gigs. 
Oh. We need to talk okay. questions from fans. We okay. need to talk topics that are okay. burning right. on fire on sides of hills. And then questions. a new segment we would like to introduce you guys. We really would. It's it's the happy segment. <laughs> something happy. Something we're happy about instead of griping. That's an excellent the side, Susan. Hit the side. That's your sound. Oh, I don't hear anything now. I'm on fire with my stuff today. Hold on, you yeah. girls. No more. No more. All right, guys, go. We have a new segment called the happy segment because it's not griping. We're telling what makes us happy. Okay. Um, actually, it's called, as Paul put it, it's what are you happy about today? What so, are you happy about today section? What are you happy about today? What are you happy about today? What I'm happy about today is this, is that, you know, it's springtime and I do live on a hay farm and, and we do do hay. And uh, Luann runs the farm all summer while I'm out partying on the Happy Together tour. But what my funnest thing is, is when I get, it's a thing called a brush hog and it's a gigantic blade of mower. It's like a big, huge, gigantic mower mm -hmm. that you drag behind your, your tractor and it's a PTO. So it's running on the PTO and and it's just a pain in the butt to get on. It took me like two hours. I was soaking wet because things just don't slip on. You know, you got to pry and pry. oh my god, and it's huge. And I'll even send a picture. Maybe we can put it up on the website oh, later on today. That. But yeah, um, but anyway. So, but my joy is is that I am done with it. I said to Louie today. I said, hey, any more brush hogging? And she goes, nope. I think we can put it away for the summer. And man, I took it off in a heart. It comes off really easy. It's getting it on. That's a really hard hey. to do. I mean, I can't even tell you. So yeah. what I'm happy yeah. about is the brush hog is done. Okay. Yeah. So we're putting Paul down for he's happy that his brush hog is done today. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. That's because yesterday it wasn't done, right? That's it was not. It was not. Susan, you got one? I think I'm going to keep it simple. I'm really happy to have my cows back. <laughs> Well, that's, that made you happy today. It's This isn't like what makes happy you happy today. in life. This right. is what made you happy today. Happy today was having the girls back, calm, cool, cooperative. Okay. I, I, what made me happy today was I went into one of the AM, PM gas station mini marts and they had a grape crush. And the reason I was happy was because you don't see grape crush hardly anywhere. Yeah, hardly. no, orange. But you in score a bottle a grape or crush. in a can? Bottle. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Then, that's big. Not, Good no, stuff. It's not, it's not Fanta. It's Grape Crush. Grape yeah. Crush. It's the Crush. Band, I think. You oh, know crush what it is. Yeah. It's too great. You know. Man, yeah. Yeah. Sitting, absolutely. Yeah. You see it sitting in there. You go, oh, wow. They got Grape Crush. So I was happy about that's that. That's good stuff. Yeah. Because, you know, it's funny because I could have a gripe because I've been going to the supermarket and I haven't been finding any grape soda whatsoever. <laughs> and that has been, a, a bit, that's not, that's for another day. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, a, that's I, a, have, I could have a gripe about the new system great. of jazz yeah. that's cashless, Excuse but I, it's not today. Go ahead, Bob. <laughs> well, I'm going to agree with Paul, even though it's not today. Yeah. This this absence of grape soda in general is like, what is with that? Now, I know they run the jazz, and they're not buying grape soda. Well, don't make so much of it then. Yeah, I think it is great prejudice. I think it's just more of that stuff that's out there that I'm highly against. Well, there's is a, it a supply of, chain problem, though. Chain supply, supply <laughs> chain. Well, I notice a lot of grape. I notice a lot of sodas that identify as grape sodas. I'll put it that way. And they okay. fail. Copy they that. Fail. Okay. Yeah, it's but it's grape just, crush. Yeah. It's confusing. Okay. I mean, Fanta is okay. <laughs> you got to get hey, back uh -oh. to the positive. I think we might be in trouble for the first time of our, our <laughs> podcast <laughs> life. Circle okay. back. Circle back. Grape soda. It's sad it's not in the thing. And it is no, very No, no, no. It's good. It's good. He found okay. it. And, no, and it's cashless at Jazz Fest Blows. Okay, let's roll. Okay, so we're done with the happy segment. We're done with the happy we segment. Roll the next topic. That was a good segment. Okay, no, we got to go uh, over. Our okay. gifts. Let's go over our okay. gifts. The most important Thanks. one, since it's next week, it is, is St. Cloud is opening for Peter Noon at Whitney Park at the yes. 30, a second, yes. I believe, thirty fifth anniversary. It's the Liberty Park Block Party. I love that phrase. Yeah. Block party. And it's the whole band. Part, it's our man. whole band. It's whole band. That's whole awesome. Band. The gates open at six. I, I I think they said gates, not doors. Maybe the yes, gates. they said oh, gates. You know what that means? Horses. Yep. Well, it's horses Peter Noon. and uh, <laughs> food. Peter Noon too. So uh, this is a big yes, gates yes, mean yes. horses and food to the This cow. is our yeah. <laughs> first time opening for Peter Noon. 
Finally. Although we, we had him on our podcast. So I'm that episode. Yeah, yeah. I am an idiot. You know, that might be a little bit of the reason why he might have said, hey, look, the councils, I was on their podcast. It was really a lot of fun. Let them open up for me in Minneapolis. Yes, let them, please. From the cloud. I, I the think cloud. that's a great way to think. I would think he was on our podcast and looked, Look at these poor suckers. I, I'm going to give them a <laughs> shot. They need a break. Okay, give, them a I'll night, take it. give them a night for me. I only have two other. <laughs> these poor kids yeah. still roughing it, still dragging I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy Listen, to have one of his 200. I yes, want to watch you, the guy. Lisa. I want to be on the side of the stage watching the guy play the intro to Mrs. Brown. You've got a lovely daughter. That muffled okay. sound. Okay. I just want to know, yeah. does he pull up a muffler on his strings or is he going to do it yeah. with the back of his hand, which the, if yeah. you didn't have that Gretchen, you had to use the back of your hand. Yeah, Listen, yeah. That'll be fun. Man, Bob, I remember. I can remember back in the day when you would do it, you know. And, man, as soon as you would do it, everybody would go crazy, you know, uh-huh. because they it knew did. the song you were going to do. There was like no him with the gap in the hair. Well, I really think the like. guitar, man, the Paul's guitar right. sent Paul's these right. people off, man. Oh, I know. I, I remember them. what it sounded like. Was because it black? We're, we're going to follow. It was an orange guitar. We're going to follow orange. orange Gretsch with a muffler. We're going to follow up with a good performance of Mrs. Brown. Sounds just like the guy. That's what we did when we were young, right? But you're yep. right. As soon as they saw that we could do the intro correctly, we sold it right there. Yep. It's true. It's true, man. It was so good stuff. Jump on that stage and take that boy's guitar from him and do that with Peter Newman. Oh, my. Right? So look for that next week, folks. No, I'm not. Stop. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's a big deal. Right now, we're in the middle of our June swing of the Happy Together tour. Oh, yes, and it's a blast yes. out it's here, y'all! I love it my has been I love going my well, dog. going well, <laughs> going well. So we're going to be out for like twenty-five days, and then we're off for two weeks, right? Yeah. Or, uh, or ten days. Yeah, yeah. Right. I like to say two weeks. Feels good. The seventh, <laughs> yeah, to the seventh. I think ten days. It's ten days. So what? Okay. The, the what? But but it it is May first. We want to let everyone know we're excited. It's May first that we're How taping. Can it be May first if we're in the middle of the June run of Happy Together. Well, I because am- our May first episode taping date is going to be our June twenty third airing date. Wow, we're, we're ahead, guys. We have to have all of our summer episodes in the bank before we leave May third. That's 30th. Tell the truth. Yeah, and that's the truth. So this Where is where we first. at now. We we chose May Pang for today's guest because it is May Day. Yes. Right, right. right. So and we were, sense. yeah, it was yeah, very nice she decided to, to come on on May Day. That she probably sense. has a lot of other people asking her to c- do something the for May her stuff, on course. May Day. And uh, so she came to us, and that's nice. That and uh, yeah. yeah, you know what we need too? We need to ask Brad about our song plugger. Do we have a song, pl- or no, or Abby, do we have a song plugger of our own? Yeah, you know, question. that goes around with our songs and hey, says, hey, you should do this. Hang- Maybe May will go back into song plugger business and be our song plugger. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to know how they something. do that. I since don't know. Paul, Let's ask her. Since Paul brought up Abby North of, B- of BMG, who will be administering the entire council catalog, I'm yep. sure you can find her email. If you guys have any questions about any of our music or um, why isn't Christmas time in a movie yet? Or things like that. You know, you can email her. She's our girl. <laughs> you know, in, stuff that's the, keeping you up at night. In the big time. <laughs> no, well, Paul said Abby. And I thought, well, who's Abby? Oh, no. I that's know. who Abby is. Yeah. She's yeah. Like, yeah. <clears throat> our publisher. Good. All right. Hey, you guys. Yes. Any questions, Bob? We got any people wanting to know things from us. They have any questions? Well, for go ahead. I Paul. know. Go well, ahead. I was just going to say, I, don't, I think the questions that we have, we did want to kind of just let everybody know that in the future, and not in the far future, this will probably be in the next week or two, we're going to do a podcast devoted completely to the Pledge Music Drive. What happened to it? What we're, what's it, it's all about? And, you know, you guys out there, if you have questions about it, you know, we're going to talk all about it there. And uh, yes, so if those, you do, what you would really those, be helpful. Wait, can I just say this real yep, super quick? What would be very helpful is if get your questions together, send them to Robert. That's where we get all of them from. All of them, because we're going to tell you second by second how and what and who and where. Go, Bob. Well, send them to info at council.com. That's where we're going to see these. If you have any. 
Right. We, yeah. we intend we intend to de- dedicate an episode. We're going to take you through the whole thing that's going to answer all your questions, but nothing really answers everybody's questions. So this is your opportunity. Uh-huh. If you think you have something unique, like I thought you guys were giving away an autograph boat. I never got a boat. You can contact us at and we'll dispel it. And we'll address it completely. when we do that that episode. We have your yes. answers. We have your answers to anything yeah. about this pledge music thing. Yeah. Yes. And then we'll have I'd like to take the fifth have, on that. <laughs> yeah. We'll have said it all. We'll have said it all. All right. like we'll do a whole thing. We'll go one day this happened and then we will end up and now we're here. So yeah. like it'll be said and then we can say. If anybody has further questions, please refer to episode Ferner Ferner. Well, we'll have a reference tool to refer people to with who didn't hear this at first. Right. Yeah. And we can't assume that everybody that pledged to us listens to the podcast. I mean, you would think and, maybe they would. But being that it's going to be, Susan, being that it's going to be on the Facebook page of the councils and, and on our website, that'll direct everybody to to the podcast and we'll get more podcast people. Yeah. I I also want to say, it's like, it's really important that y'all watch this because like (laughs) some of the things I'm hearing are are, are startling. And so like, because most of you know us, so that's, what's kind of a little weird. So we really feel we now have to go and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, which just makes a guy feel a little strange because you're like, you know, we're telling you the truth about everything, but we're cool to itemize it. We're going to walk you down it. And at the yeah. end, you'll go, holy, whatever your choice of word is at that moment. Go you guys are going to be go sending call. back stuff to us. You're going to feel so bad for us. No, no, no. They're just, <laughs> gonna, no, but the, what they're going to not, what they're going to know is, because like, I get this weird ass feeling. We aren't sitting on anybody's money. We, we, you'll, you'll no, be we'll fascinated on what happened how this record even yeah. got paid for go back yeah, we'll get into all that, all in, that in a on our episode. dedicated episode gonna be something. yeah that'll be pretty cool so uh, yeah. we think it's time and for anybody sitting there i can't imagine it but going what in god's name are they talking about pledge oh. music was a money kind of donation campaign a crowdfunding kind of campaign pledge music like think kickstarter and they took a uh, money on our behalf so we could make our album rhythm of the world and we set a goal for seventy thousand and made the goal but just before they were gonna we were gonna get any money this place went bankrupt and we tried to resurrect a, a solution that would not leave all of our pleasures out in left field and it, it, the whole thing's backfiring we'll get into all that but that's basically yeah. a capsule of it right right I look forward to that because it's gonna be super fun yeah <laughs> yeah um, it was cool okay. seeing a day uh, at the Troubadour, I have to say, because this the place was full of people, and then the people came from the documentary screening, okay? And I was up on stage with a bunch of musicians. You know how these bands are huge on these nights. It's like, yeah, yeah, lots of musicians. Super, um, group, super, super, super. But it and was there were cool. a lot of people there? Yeah, I got to tell you. But to me, honestly, the Troubadour has become a little dark and danky. It's, it's all dark, and you can hit your head on things. It's Wow, it always was. Where it, it was. No, no, no. It, it had more no. room at first. They pushed Archie the stage Dangry. out. They they shrunk it this way, and I I, I know okay. the place well. But anyway, All you right. just stay in the balconies right. and you're Danger safe. And but, but the one above, bad news, you know. But it was cool seeing her walk in because you started seeing her to the left. I start motion in the crowd. <laughs> you know that look when the people are all standing. All yeah. of a sudden, this line starts sep- not separating, but something's going on to my left. Something's the going C on to my part. right. It, the sea parts, good Susan, and in and it's May, you know. And I go, wow, look at this night! I was just blown away by it. Yeah, when yeah. I finally stood there and watched it, and she's just holding court like she should. This is her night, you know. And she's come from this great. I heard it was so beautiful. It was just perfect. Set the record straight, and how- straight kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. and, and does anybody know how, how it went? The screening, everybody's loving it, or I have oh, what the reaction to the film is. Yeah, uh-huh. I haven't read reviews or anything like that. Oh, okay, yeah, but it, yeah, it's just started. I think April thirteenth. Oh my god! So that's another thing. So she walks in, and and I'm so I'm looking down from the stage, and it's like purple hair. Okay, and I'm going, yeah, yeah. See, Man, she, I yeah, love she, purple she, hair. Yeah, she had purple hair that night. And so the band's doing dream number nine and she's whispering, you know, that part. And you hear me call oh. my name, whisper your name. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I I actually want to know about the recording session of the whisper. So I mean, <laughs> you know, hey May, come on out and whisper this uh, on this record. We're yeah, I'd like. Was she sitting? Wait, in have you booth? asked her about it, or you're going to ask her Never here? Never anything. But okay, was she sitting in the booth? Or ask her here? Right, oh, right. Whisper. Did you raise your hand? Or... <laughs> right. I mean, that's such a minor question, but you know, you you start. No, thinking. those are the important ones. Yeah. Or did you? It'll be fun. It'll be fun. But yeah, she took the room over for sure. And then I looked down at my feet, and like about three people back is Henry Diltz. <laughs> Oh, oh you're kidding. Said, hey, everybody, Henry's, Henry Diltz is here. I was so shocked to see him because, you know, when you know what someone really looks like, you know, I mean, we all know what Henry really looks of like. Of course. So nearly three yeah. men back in front of me is Henry Diltz. I can't ignore it, you know. Love that was Henry. Right, right. He's such insane. a sweet man. And, yeah, man, and, and let me tell you something. Photos. The other hero of the night no one will tell you about is a guy named David Jenkins, okay? David Jenkins kept the guitars tuned, kept the guitars going, kept the the pace of the of the night going uh, because if anything bogged down, he was the unbogger is what I would okay. say. Okay. That's what assume. Jenks does. And I wanted to give him kudos as as being nice. noticed through the night by people who knew how important what he was doing, he was doing it real well. This for you, Dave. He was production coordinator, yeah. Man, I, yeah, I brought my guitar. He works to on him. the Wild Honeys, guys. I yeah. brought my guitar he and Mike to him. Ackerman. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I brought my guitar to him, and as usual, um, I didn't have a tuner. Oh, there's May. Hey, hey May. Oh, oh I'm glad I didn't choose the background you guys got. I just wore <laughs> down my back. I Wait. mean, I was going to use almost the same ones. And then I said, Hawaii looked a little too much. So I said, All yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Get your little hula. Hi, honey. Hi. Ladies Boy, and gentlemen. I've been all around the world. I missed you guys. Yes, you have. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a formal intro. Ladies and gentlemen, podcast land, which is 23 countries. And we just uh, uh, got over 100,000 downloads. Thank you. Um, it, it is May Day. It is May 1st. And our guest, in line with all of that wonderfulness, is May Pang. We have already kind of went through your story to the listeners. Maybe we're having fun with it before you got here. I have a lot of questions, Missy. Yeah, we're going. Oh. Well, I want to ask her this. I want to ask her that. I want to ask you that. But but we want to know about you. But anyway, I was just telling them about the troubadour and and what a great night that was. Oh my God, I felt bad. I want you to know. I I yeah. turned to Bob and I said, "Do you think Paul and Susan are going to get upset? Oh, <laughs> They're no. not here. No, said, yeah. no, we might said, be sad we couldn't come, but not never upset. We love hearing all the stories. It's been yeah, well, yeah. it was kind of funny. Bob said he'd smooth it out for me. So, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no, girl, come on, we're grown ups, please. Well, the funny thing about that, May, was that you know before it, you know, Bob was pretty excited. He was a little nervous, going, you know, well, what is this going to be? What is it, you know, blah blah oh, blah. Dude. And I said to Bob, I said, Bob, you know May better than most of the people that are even going to be there that are that are putting this thing on so you'll have to introduce her to everybody oh i will say one thing though your brother john johnny grabbed me before the show really started and says i'm the one council you haven't met yet there you oh, go yeah he felt oh, like cool. me yes he did he did he did it's funny but he's I, on I, this coast he could come to my parties now oh yeah he can be on your radio yes. so all kinds of fun yes stuff. yeah so he's he, i said we have a party because i want to be invited and he he's will. wonderful. And you his wife is my best friend. Yeah. They're great people. So, yeah. So everybody's going to be, you know, I'm doing my party again. Just so if you okay. guys are in town, okay. you're always welcome. Right. When? Now, listen, wait, this before this podcast runs away, guys, we yes. got to get a little decorum here. Okay. Do you, you have any last minute things you'd like to say before I officially start our? <laughs> well, the right? whole thing is that I just want you to know, and people should not. I was just told by the producers that uh, there might be a streaming thing happening at the end of summer, and so people who didn't get a chance to see it in this past couple of weeks will oh, yeah. get a chance. Me? No, you hey, want How that. is it being received? Everything's. Oh. It's been good. It's been good. really good. I've been so grateful. Um, you know, I was in People Magazine, The Guardian, yeah, it's New fun. York Post, Yahoo, everywhere. And I was like, oh, my God, 
I didn't think my <laughs> story was that going to be that had taken off, and it did. Yeah, nice, uh, girl, nice. It's yeah. awesome. But, uh, and we know Bob, why, you have any last thing? Well, well, we know why it did, because some of us were the fans back in the early 70s oh, man. that were following this uh, this business. <laughs> oh, and, 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 so, so we'll get into that. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. You all are cart and horse the heck out of this thing. So I remember That's 73, down. 74, but a lot of us going to say, what, what? Did what is going on? Anyway, all right. Stop, stop, stop with the preview. Take it, Susan. <laughs> okay, right. ask me a question. Ask yeah, away. Susan. Hi, little May Pang. Welcome to the Calso Podcast. We did that. I'm finally here. This is not one thing. I was I felt so bad I couldn't do it sooner. I couldn't yeah. tell you guys yeah. what yeah. I was doing. And now <laughs> yeah. I can. I know it's okay. exciting. Believe me, we've been waiting. Yeah, we have. We're very, we're all Some of us since 74, that. but that's okay. Here we go. <laughs> that's right. Um, okay, so I like to, I mean, we know you are May Peng. We know you have had a very long life outside of the whole dating John thing, and which is totally cool, but like there's a whole lot more, you know, of a life that you've lived and we're going to touch on all of it. But I like to kind of take it back to the very beginning when you, you know, you're born, you're born in Manhattan, right? In, in 1950. And um, you Great. got folks that, what, yeah, that are, um, they're Im Chinese immigrants. Is that correct? I'm Mom the and first dad? one to be born in America on both sides of the family. My oh, sister wow. and everybody else was born in China. I'm the first. Oh, wow. One. Oh, May, that's that is great. That is just the kind of stuff we, we love to find out. So, all right. So this is a new world for everybody. And, and I mean, it's new for you because you just got born. But here's the dealio. I'm wondering. OK, so we know you as a very music based one way or the other behind the scenes, in front of it, hanging out, absorbing it, all the things. Um, with music that you you're known for but when you're born you know you come out to shoot those first three years are not about that until you hit that mark and then you start getting interested in things in life and your parents might have ideas for you of what they want you to do but I always like to know what was on May Pang four-year-old May Pang's career agenda or her future what did it look like and and then if it wasn't music okay about that but then how did music come in to where you just knew one way or the other. Oh, that's a good one. Thanks. I just want you to know, I mean, I was miserable. You know, you're the only child. You're not really wanted because it's, um, you know, I'm not a boy. That, was, oh, just, that yeah. was the first big thing in the family. Wow. So I'm like tossed to the side. So I always felt always awkward. Luckily, my mother was always protective of me. So I grew up in, in Harlem, and then we moved to the projects in Spanish Harlem. So I didn't grow up with any, quote, money, and it was constant arguing in the family. But as time got on, I'm in uh, Spanish Harlem. I'm in this building where you have uh, Blacks and Puerto Ricans, and I'm not even on their level. I'm considered sitting the back of the bus type of person because gotcha, there's nobody else. Um it, you know, music was permeating all throughout the building as I was going to school. Mm -hmm. I went to Catholic school. <laughs> and you'll see that in the film. I talk about going to Catholic school because I was the best school in, in the area. But neither one of my parents were Catholic. My mother was okay. Buddhist. <laughs> my father's atheist. Naturally. You know, oh. Catholic school. So I, I go there and it was great. It was, you know what? It was the best training ground that you could ever have is to go to, because they really knew what to do when they, you know, instilled a lot of knowledge into you. Cause I, when I graduated eighth grade, I knew more than any of the other kids that went to public okay. school around me. We, okay. we, yeah. so then, we went to Catholic school too, all of us. Yeah, yeah. But and so I were to you become a nun? That was the oh my god! So did my sister in law. But were you a musical? Did you play? Did you sing? Or did no, you but just I love absorb? and yeah. Yes. Go ahead. I did love what was happening on the on when I was five. You know, you start seeing American Bandstand music, local music started happening. Right. So all of a sudden, the TV every all every, of it. every all day. Of it. I was like, oh my god! I loved American Bandstand coming from Philadelphia. So I was watching yeah. every day after school. I come back. I was 
mesmerized. All and right. then you have your local Lloyd Saxton, Zachary, everybody that was on. Loved Lloyd. Yeah. So now you, so you know, in all of that, and then I always wanted music. I mean, that's all I heard. I went in. It was the Bobby Rydells and the Fabian. That was that era. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, can I, can I ask? Did your parents? have ideas for you what they wanted you to do besides be tossed aside or did you just do whatever you want because you were tossed aside no, i think my my mother wanted me to be more like of course like everybody else studious go to you know be a, an accountant be a okay. whatever whatever okay. it was never music although All in right. my household every saturday when my father was home saturday and sunday we had chinese opera going throughout the house well there you go there they at least did have some kind of appreciation for it absolutely right? and then i would mm. go on weekends to see the chinese kung fu movies you know, in the theater oh, yeah. <laughs> so i was with you there you go <laughs> i did all that yeah. Okay, yeah. and so so, but of course, you know, you're you're. How do you how do you so how do you wrangle this becoming your your business? Your your how you could make a living. Your lifestyle? I didn't know how. I got to tell you, I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. uh, when I graduated uh, out of high school, I went to a two year college, and I thought, okay, I can manage that. Next, I couldn't. I hated okay. school. Okay. That did, okay. I don't know why calculus I need. I did not need calculus. Okay, in my head. okay. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to go to, and back in those days, you can go to a music agency and or an agency for work. So I went in and I said, I'm looking for a job. What can you do? Oh, uh, whatever. Of course, I couldn't do anything. I went, I was in a, an academic course. I didn't even know how to type. I was All walking right, my right. way through <laughs> everything. Wow. Yeah. And they sent me to a building where it was a Japanese uh, company and that didn't sit well with my mother because my mother was in World War II. She, she was in the village where the Japanese invaded the place oh. and she used to run. Yes. And she worked in the rice paddy field and she was freaked out. And to the day she died, she never forgot how they invaded. And she kept saying to me, she would cry in the middle of the night saying, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. You're so, kidding. so that was always the thing that was happening. But aside from all of that, music was the only thing that would soothe my soul. That would make me feel yeah. comfortable at home. So I, So here I am at this Japanese bicycle place. Didn't have any chemistry. I go downstairs and a friend of mine standing waiting for me. She says, do you know what's in this building? Apple Records. And I went, what? Could this be the same Apple Records? Just take a look. And of course I recognize the names and also, I go, I said, I'm going upstairs for a job. <laughs> and she said, you're crazy. I said, what am I crazy? I'm already at zero. So if they turn me down, I'm not gonna be worse off. There's absolutely right. nothing to lose. Right? And so- right. you know, Minus one, but that's okay. Right, I head upstairs, I go in, and at first, this lady sitting there, and I, she's looking at me. I said, I'm just looking for a job. Just, I don't know if there's any openings. Okay. And then she sees me doing this. And I'm I'm just looking because you're thinking, oh, the Beatles, are they looking at the same things I'm looking at? You know, ah. all, being goes. And she's looking, she goes, can I help you for something else? And I said, do the Beatles ever come here? And she, <laughs> she said, no. Nah. That's she what I want to know. One second later, Two doors on the other side of her desk, they open and all these people are filing out. And I'm going, what just happened? It felt like I hit the lotto. Everybody's coming at me. So, yeah. and then she just happened. She was a lovely lady. She turned around. She said, this girl needs a job. Are there any openings? And this Oof. guy turns around and says, come back after lunch. And wow. I came back after lunch. Can you oh, type? Man. Sure. Can you, do <laughs> you file? Sure. Answer the phone. Sure. Can you do that? Sure. She goes, okay, can you start next week? I said, sure. <laughs> I, I have to ask. I have to Take ask. Take it till you make it. Go, When Bobby. the doors opened left and right and all these, I would think, people, important people are coming at you. Are you sitting there going, that's not John. That's not Paul. Is yeah, that you're looking for me. Yeah, I'm just Paul, sort of looking like, like this. And then I, I didn't know what was happening. But what it was, and I had no idea, it was lunch hour. And everybody was just like, oh. and you're going, they must be making big decisions in there. I'm in an important time in life. Right. So it's lunch. 
Oh, that's <laughs> it's lunch. It's lunch. That's all it was. Isn't this so, oh my job God, with the that's lunch a group. All right, so okay, that's a, go ahead. Okay, so you went back after lunch, clearly. And of course, yeah. I said yes to everything. Of course, I didn't know anything, but I right. went there with a lot of spunk, and you know, and the, what what did they say, chutzpah? And I went in, and I, said, yeah, and I said, "Great!" And I walked out of there, walking on cloud nine, going, "I just got a job. I'm in the music." <laughs> At any moment during that whole experience, did you ever stop looking for a beetle, or did you ever think that you're oh, going to pop? I, I was always looking at it. Was always Good. now. A lot of Good. people did not know this because it was not in the movie, but I will tell you this: oh. I was there maybe a week or two, and this is in September of 1969. Oh. And the phone rings at the board. I happened to be relieving the girl that was at the board, and it was some guy in the radio station. And I go, what can I help you with? And they go, well, we just heard that Paul is dead. I said, what? Of course oh. not. They said, do you have anything? I said, no, there's no, it's it's not happening. We've not heard anything. So I said, hold on. I try to get everybody in the office, like the right department to take it. So I'm calling in the, the Paul back. is dead department? Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, so this one can take it too. So I so I go back to the to to them. They say you deal with it. Oh, me, man. <laughs> so I'm like sitting there talking to the guy who the, whoever the DJ was. Can we can we quote you? Can we? I said, listen, I'm I can't help you here. We never heard anything. Can you? I say, I guess so. So whatever it was, nobody realized. And I said, please don't use my name because I didn't know how they were gonna feel. Right? I've yeah, only yeah. been there two weeks. So I said, please don't, but two I can weeks. assure you that we don't. Two weeks that you've lost a beetle. <laughs> yeah, but they've used that ever since. They said, we spoke to somebody at Apple who said they never heard about it. It was me. Uh, hey, oh. now listen. Uh, hey, and uh, listen, if this, if this was May Payne today. And it's not today, in the movie. Here's May Payne today, and the guy, and she gets that call. Hey, Paul McCartney's dead. She's on Google. It's Paul McCartney. Just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I don't think so, it. buddy. <laughs> but back then, y- your mind had to be going, why is he asking me this, right? Exactly. I mean, yes. that was true. Yes, I, have, I said, then we don't wait. know anything. That's uh, it. May, what did you end up? No, how do you have any idea how that got going? Not to get off on a topic, but you know what? It's like any fan. There's more rumors, and everybody wants that conspiracy theory going on. You know, it's oh, that, and it's that like way. what I, that Chinese whisper. Somebody says, you know, this may have happened, and it's like Paul walking without shoes. All of a sudden, must oh no, we know all the clues. Yeah. yeah, and on that album, Paul is a dead man. Miss him, miss him. Right, oh, yes. and my, that's not what they said. You know, so I hey, very Paul. Oh, but you were right very there, May. Yeah, we bought that, it. We were. Oh like, man, it, we were May. So you hang up. up. I, certainly you turned around is paul dead everyone's no he's alive and well so you move on but then you start hearing like paul is dead did you think oh. it was nutty what was going on we all thought it was just i said nobody wanted to take the call i'm a, <laughs> how weird can that be two weeks into this job and i get a call like this and nobody wow. in the office wanted it except oh my you goodness. deal with it how did that happen yeah, so that's in that crazy. Office, mind you, Alan Klein also, and it was Alan Klein's office as well. And he was also managing the Rolling Stones. At So I had, we had the Beatles and we had the Rolling Stones and the Stones were doing, getting ready to do their uh, tour. And that was around, oh God, was that a chaos when uh, the, the Altamont. Uh, um, oh you know, yeah. The Hell's Angels and yes. all that. So that came about too. It was like yeah, our office was going crazy everywhere. Man. Imagine it. And a couple of the people, uh, Godfrey Townsend, who you know. Yeah. What about uh-huh. him? You have to ask him how he met me. I don't even remember it, obviously, because he came up to the office, apparently, because, you know. Way right. back in the day? Great. Way back in the day. Go ahead. He was young. He's a young kid. He's coming up looking for the Beatles. And I said, no, they're not here. And he goes, but you turned around. And he said, and you kept saying, wait, I got some things for you. And you kept throwing all these promo stuff at us. And we took it all in. He goes, that was the best thing ever. <laughs> wow, May, wow. what a trip. Yeah, now, so all these little things that people have said to me, what I did with them back in the day, and I had no idea. You know, I can't remember all of those. I was amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Okay, thank you. If you don't mind, all right, take us to the moment. 
And thank you for answering questions you've answered already. Take us yeah. a moment that it finally happens. And I don't care whether it's a, a, a beetle walks in and you meet a beetle. Now, who's the beetle you're going to meet first? And and wow. did you go home that night and go, finally, it happened. I mean, how, how long do I have to work for a place? How did that happen? Who it was, was, there was rumors going around the office that a beetle was coming in. And I was like, oh, okay. So all great, all great. excited. It's for the first time, the office is finally happening, right? Okay. And it is my favorite beetle. So I'm even more excited. And it's Ringo. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Ringo. Surprise. Ringo did arrive. <laughs> because he had those blue eyes. And I was like, oh, I can God. dig. Yeah. And I found out not that long ago that the most uh the most popular beetle really was Ringo. Because yeah. Because he was I, precious. Yeah. I had no well, idea, but it speaking was speaking as cute. a Speaking as a Beatle fan, Ringo was very popular. That's true. Not for his blue eyes. I wasn't going that deep on Ringo. Uh, but he did have a way to come out of a role and get back on the beat. I will give him that. So, But we loved Ringo. He was so he was cool, you know. And he had those rings. Rings. Yes, he had those rings. And I started wearing tons of rings as and well. Okay, so, so and he Ringo. Ringo. John at one point said to me, out of the clear blue, he goes, uh, who's your favorite Beatle? Not thinking for two seconds. I went, oh, Ringo. And then I looked up and I went, oh, Jesus, what did I just say? Oh, wow. And I did that all like this. And I turned around and I said, remember, I was 13. <laughs> just remembered that. So, yeah. I would have said, like, you know, I empty so this desk now or you want to walk me out, you know. Like, yeah. And yeah. I go, oh, my God, what wow. did I just so do? So how do you handle that? So he goes, so it was Ringo. And I went, I was 13, I'm pleading with him. And we were meeting uh, Ringo shortly. And I went, oh, my God, I'm so upset. I was embarrassed because he said, he goes up to him and goes, you are her favorite. Wow. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> like brother, wow. brother jealousy type of brother jealousy. Yeah, oh, and I, and he, but he took it. He, that's why people love Ringo. It's because he knew how to handle that one. Yeah, Anything. and you know, he just made a joke of it, you know, of yeah, why yeah. it's a beetle. So now, he to ease so he, the tension because he obviously know John's yeah personality of sorts, you know. So, so you're at the, like, yeah. that's what Rico you're, did a lot. Go ahead. You're Bob. at the reception desk of Apco, and life is like you're on a cloud because you're close enough. I'd be close enough for me too. Let me tell you, you're close enough to what to the biggest scene in the world that's going on. And okay, the Rolling Stones are thrown in for extra. This is crazy. So. But that's now you're going to work for John and, and Yoko's office, right? And and oh, when wait a minute, I got in between, yeah, in take between us, all right, Ringo go ahead. first getting there, huh. George Harrison comes in with the master tapes to be <laughs> mastered in America, the All Things Must Pass album. A great album, and, oh, wow! Great and album. he came in with Patty, one of the nicest people I had ever met. They, I mean, he was so accommodating. I saw him, he saw me with the camera and I said, can I take a photo? <laughs> and he goes, whoa. And he said, of course. And I- You're very bold, but, a, was, but yeah. we're fans. We, we're going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So he said, absolutely. And then he said, can, he goes, take some more of me. So I took a couple of solo shots of you start this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so he, he was it. really cool. He was the, one of the loveliest uh, people I have ever met. He really is. He's very, he was, and he would speak his mind if he didn't like something. And he gave me uh, a lovely compliment much later on when I was with John. So it was, it was really cool. Oh, well, well, I didn't know what well, it was. Well, the oh, you want to know? Okay. Oh, yeah. What was it? I wish okay. you were with me. What was it? Our listeners, we wanted. were we were at the uh, Plaza Hotel, and John had not seen John. Uh, John had not seen George in a number of years, so he sat there. And this is one of the stories I have told, but a lot of people don't still don't know about it. So John's wearing his dark shades, and he's looking, and he goes, "I want to see your eyes." This is George saying it to him. So he puts, he puts his glasses down. He puts on his other pair of glasses. And of course, his other glasses have the shade too, right? So it's never just <laughs> that clear. So he looked at him again and he went, 
and he reached over and ripped it off his face. And I'm sitting there like this going, thinking, John, don't hit him. Please don't hit him. You know, I'm like, Pick up a trying to be cool. fight. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. So yeah. all of a sudden they just went nose to nose. And he said, I just want to see your eyes. And John said, can you see them now? And he said, yes, I'm good. And then he backed oh. off. And then oh. he looked at him and he goes, I'm glad she's with you. And then he looked oh. at me and then he goes, I'm glad you're with him. Wow. I mean, are you guys feeling the moment right now just from her telling it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Sitting at the table next to them. Jeez, yeah. geez. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, all right. So, George, then who is next? Now we come down in December of 70, early December, and it's John and Yoko. They come to town to do two movies. She had two short movies that she wanted to film, shoot it, edit, and then show it at the avant-garde film festival. And one was called Up Your Legs Forever, and the other one's called Fly. Uh, I talk about these two movies in my film. So when you see it, you'll you'll know that it's in there. Cool, cool. Yeah. So it's it's uh so both of those movies, uh the premise of the uh, Up Your Legs Forever is uh it's 365 pairs of legs that I was trying. We were trying to get so you could donate it for peace, and we would shoot. I would call up people, and they said we would like for you to donate your legs for peace. We want to just shoot you from your toes to your thighs. That was like my whole speech, and I, right, right. you know, the whole thing. I mean, I was calling people like Jackie Kennedy, you know, <laughs> and, and, and people, you know, all these, all these, yeah, and they're going what. And I said, Yoko would like for you know to donate your legs for peace. So, and then we would get other fans off the street. You pay them a dollar, and come in, and they were like, John and Yoko are upstairs. And we say, yeah. And they'd yeah. be like, okay, and they'd be heading up, and they they couldn't believe it. Like, oh my God, they're standing there. So some people would like to see them. Uh, they would just take off their trousers and you see from your toes to your thighs, right? And then there were others that wanted to show more. <laughs> God, yeah. Wow. A wild time. <laughs> a wild Free love, peace. And, yeah, and I just <laughs> decided not to do any of that because I was like, oh, I was just a little too prima donna, not prima donna, more uh, just too nervous to do something like that. So I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going home. And I told the guy, I said, six o'clock, I'm leaving. I yeah, so May, yeah, when you, I when you hang on one second, May, when, so you, right, right from there, you'd go home and you're on your way home, and you, I mean, you think it's yourself. Wow, what a crazy day! Or how did I get in this? How, how, well, how is I, this? I thought of that, and I just said, I can't. I just said, I hope it does. I hope it lasts for a long time because I didn't uh, want to yeah. go back into the office. In those days, you got to really get dressed up. You know, you got to wear a skirt. Yeah, you know, yeah. Pants back a lot. In the day. Very, very much. Right. So now I was able to wear my jeans for once. You know, so I was right. happy. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, it was rock and roll. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, but in the office, it was like you had to be prim and proper. So I was happy. Good. And then they uh, went home. Oh, yeah. The, the second movie. Why? Okay. The second movie was uh, was a little tougher because I didn't understand it, but the script was. <laughs> That's <and a> <laughs> it was remember we were, December. We were. It's about a fly, and okay. it's about a fly that crawled over a nude woman's body, and then oh, yeah. and then it flies away. That's okay. the and as it's explained, that's the script. Okay. So to get the flies for the winter was the <laughs> toughest. Okay. Um, so I had, we enlisted a lot of college students to go out and try and catch flies and, and bring them in. No photos. So that's what we did. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Okay, so, that's Yoko. Okay. All right. So when do we meet John or Paul? Who's he, next? Was, he was, he was there. Okay. Oh, so everybody was there together. Yeah. Well, no, it's only John and Yoko. Everybody comes separately. Oh, okay. Okay. okay? okay, okay. So now. Uh, John, uh, I go to London. They needed something. They needed a movie, and it was called Erection. And at that point, he, you know, John was always on the list of yeah. teams of these movies, and they're thinking, aha, you know. So yeah. I'm carrying a movie. I said, "What am I carrying?" They go, "The movie's called Erection." 
<laughs> you carrying around a reel? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, like, Troublemaker oh Lennon. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it was a great concept. Um, he got it was a movie about a building being torn down and then erected. <laughs> and the movie, the guy shot the the, the movie um, every couple of days on film. So he's oh, cool. okay. shooting it. Right. So you get right. so then they flash it all together. Very and cool. in the uh in the same spot every day for over a year. And the guy who did it, who stood there every day, was um Ian McMillan. Now, a lot of people know who he is, but mm -hmm. for those who didn't, uh who don't know, uh, Ian is the same guy that took the uh the picture of the Abbey Road cover. Oh, oh I did not know that. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. There's the photos of so, this building. Okay. Yeah. And it turned, I believe it was the Kensington Hilton or something. It turned out later. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. 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 So you see all these fast moving pictures put together. Yeah. It was great. Cool. Okay. Cool. So I'd like to go back to when you're in the building, the office, right. and the word is that John and Yoko are heading your way. Now, you <laughs> haven't met John, right? You haven't met him yet. No, right. I haven't met any of those. Uh, okay, those well, two, all, I have not. It, in the building and stuff, to... amongst all of you, when you hear that John and Yoko are heading in, is that oh, different? We didn't know. Than... None of us knew he, they were coming. Oh. What had happened was... Okay, go ahead. A friend in a, a friend of mine who was working with... Uh, we worked together at the office, and we come to work, and I hear her mumble to me, because I had my head turned around, she goes, what are they doing here? And I said, what are you talking <laughs> about? And she goes, look. And I look up, and right by the bank of elevators are these two figures standing there. You know, remember the um, Rolling Stone picture where they had real scruffy and and the you know yes. that picture. Yes. That's what they look like because that's when they did that that yeah, time. That so thing. they did that interview then, and they're standing by the bank of elevators. And I said, "Oh my God, what are they doing here?" We had no clue they were coming. So the the elevator comes. And we all file in and they're in the back and we're, me and my girlfriend are standing in the front. And one of the vice president comes, comes by and he goes, hello, ladies, talking to the two of us in the front. And he looks oh. up and he sees them standing in the back of the elevator. And he went, uh, and he stops and he turned his head, you know, and he stops. So I get off first and I go to my office and said, bye. And I go off. And all of a sudden, my phone is ringing, and it's the vice president going, get up here and see if they want anything. I put them in Klein's office. And I said, oh, I, I don't know why he asked me, but I got, you know, there were other people, but they May, they me. May, May. The tone you're using, I, I need to ask you something. The tone you're, I'm hearing is that you all think either you're in trouble or what are they doing here? They own the place, but they're there and everyone's kind of freaked out. I put them in Klein's office. Like, what do I do with John and Yoko? I don't know. Put them in <laughs> Klein's office. I mean, what is going on? It's only because nobody knew they were coming to America or coming to New York. Okay. And so, Never mind coming up to the office. Yeah, right. So they're all, everybody's unprepared. Everyone, okay. everyone's unprepared. Okay. I'm laughing because I'm just, you know, I'm just one of the worker bees there, you know? Everybody oh, I'm else seeing is you. like... I'm seeing you at the door now on Klein's office slowly. I, how did you do it? How did you get in? I sort of like opened the door very slowly and said, hi. And they <laughs> said, yes. And they looked at me and I said, um, I'm May. I just didn't know if you wanted anything because now they realize I work there because I yes. got before before. So right. I said, I just want to know, do you need anything? Then they go, no, 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 we don't need anything right now. I said, okay, well, here's my extension. Should you need any coffee, tea, whatever? I'm right here. They said, fine, thank you. So that was the end. That was the end. And I thought, okay, okay. that was nice. Leave I got to see them. During the day, I get this call from the yes. office manager. He said, come up here. We need to speak. I said, okay. So I come in. They go, They're, John and Yoko are here to do two films. They need people. You're it. You're one of oh, them. You're the yeah. <laughs> oh, you're going to do the job of many. I wow. Bet. Just but like that's that. That's how I got picked. I mean, it was just, wow. I was the one that got picked. Wow. I don't know if they that. asked for me or whatever, but they said, you're, you got to work with them. I said, oh. That's crazy. 
Okay. Uh, May, Go ahead, I, I want to ask May a question. I, I've got a light thing going on here. But, but, <laughs> That's so, okay. I got mine going on too. Go ahead. Awesome. Um, so you were a song plucker. Yeah, I was a song plugger. Uh, later on, I used to, John loved the idea that I that I un understood a lot of songs. We had, um, you know, we were we were so we had the same taste in songs, and so it was easy, and you know, it was it was fun because he would always say, "How how come you know so much about it?" I said, "I." I love songs and I was always curious about who wrote the song um, and why did they write these songs? I would always be more curious about that. And, right. uh, you know, even to this day, I'm always asking. So and later on, um, he used to tell Salou Grade, who was the guy who owned ATV. He said, she's the best song plugger you'll ever know. She knows everything about publishing and stuff. I was really I'm um, surprised that he even did that, you know, to tell. Now, would you would you take a song and take it to somebody and try them to have them cover it? Or Yeah, I did that much later on in the okay. early 80s. And I got uh, I made one guy, one of my songwriters, I worked for United Artists. And I okay. took my one uh, writer who was a Christian writer. And I said, I can't. I can't do anything with your songs, you know, for Christian songs at that time. Yeah. I said, um and he goes, what would you like for me to write? And at that time, it was more like Foreigner coming out, you know, that type of song. I said, a little rock, yeah. you don't have to be heavy metal. He goes, okay. He goes home three hours later. He comes back and goes, I got a song I want to play you. He's He was very prolific. And I said, great. Play this for me. I said, I love the song. And I got it I got it uh, recorded by Judas Priest. That's and then, so I made wow. him, I made him a, a, a good amount of money. Nice. It was the only outside cut on the album. And on the Not next yet. album, the whole band wanted to write with him, whoever the writers were, to write with him so they could get a piece of because they loved the way he wrote songs. And, awesome. and so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and then I also did one with uh, my Nashville writers and I got them on for, uh, uh, what was it, Diana Ross. Wow. Would you work with a publishing company and you would be like a department in a publishing company? Are you people that go and try to get these songs placed? Yep. yep. And do all companies have that? Every, I mean, is that a general? It's, you know, you you have, it's changed a lot. For me, it was yeah. like almost A&R only, but yeah. you're doing it for a publishing. Yeah. You're, you're listening to your writers and you try and get the best out of them. I had one of the best, I had some great songs. I even had this guy, Rich, this guy, Richard Lee out of Nashville. He wrote a song that uh, I don't think ever topped in his catalog again, which was a song called Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. Oh, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> and he was great. I mean, you know, you listen to, I, I heard his demo. That's a diamond, yeah. Crystal Gale did exactly what that demo is wow. saying. So, so uh, when, yeah. you, when you plug uh, your when you plug songs, you you did it in person, correct? Uh, sometimes, uh, or if I know somebody, then I would send exactly. it out. Well, let yeah, me ask you I, something. When yeah. you're doing it in person, and you, so you're playing this song in front of the, I mean, was there a sort of a normal thing that always happened? Did they always listen to the whole song? Would they do a verse and chorus and say, I, I got it, I got it? Or, Good or question. I, are, yeah, are you nervous right. while they're question. listening? Are you nervous during the listening? Because I'm always nervous when someone's listening to anything of mine. No, if it's I'm true. If I'm they, and you have to, and, and in our case, in all the song pluggers back then, and it is now too, because it's so limited, everybody wrote their own songs. So if there was a call out to all the different publishers that so-and-so is looking for something, you had to bring your A game and you had to think, uh, yeah. will they go for it? And here's one I'll tell you. Mm. I had a song that was sitting in the catalog for ages, and it was by a guy named Eric Kaz. I believe that was who it, who it was. And I heard the song, and everybody said, oh, no, no. I said, I'm telling you, it's for somebody who could doesn't have to have a big range in, in the vocals, but it'd be a great song for somebody to do a comeback. I think it's a great, you know, I'm not saying it's the end all be all of anything, but it's a good song. Yeah. And I said, um, and they all said to me, oh, no, it's not great. I said, I think Cher can do this. And they said, no, no, no. Everybody poo pooed me out the door with it. So, yeah, yeah. so I'm walking down the street a year later. 
and I'm with my friend uh, Andrew Oldham, who's you know who was the original sure. Stones publish uh, uh, producer and Andrew manager. Producer, yeah. And, and I'm listening to the song, and I'm going, and I'm, I'm singing to it. I said, "How come I know the song?" And then I realized. I said, "Wait a minute, this is the same song that that I that I try to plug previous, right? For sharing." Wow. And and they, I said, "Who is singing?" Because it was a number one song. It was Don Johnson singing what? Um, oh, what was the name of the song? Ooh, his only, his only number one song. He had yeah, it. Don Johnson. And that was, and that Not was you Amy Weiss. No. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think what it was. I, I'm gonna have to try and find. And remember. That's okay. That's okay. That's amazing. Yes. Wow. So I mean, that was always. I mean, all my friends when they found that out, they said, "Oh yeah, I remember when you were trying to plug that." I said, yeah, uh, yeah, I know what wow. I'm talking about. Okay. I know what songs are looking for. <laughs> yeah. Give you me hits, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that is A&R. That is A&R. I see why you say that. Yeah. And okay. it is because you, if you don't do it right, they'll never let you in the door again. Absolutely. And that's exactly what happens. And so, I mean, so for me, I had also, like I said, when I had Diana Ross, it was it was great. I mean, it was on her Silk album. So it was called Love Lies. So uh, you know, I'll I'll send you what I have with that, and so you can see what I did. Yeah, uh, yeah. What an interesting gig. Yeah, yeah that is interesting. I love well, doing. I want to go back to. I know you're like a mirrored magazine. <laughs> yeah. I represent all the fans. I know. That kind of went through this with me. In that way, we went through things together back in those days, very remotely, okay, okay. not connected. We're just following each other. We're dancing around the wagon train. What's going on in California? What happened at the Troubadour? You can't look up anything. Up anything. So, you know, I'd have some gaps. I, I, I want to know, for instance, it's just a yes or no question. I want to know if you were at the Troubadour. See, John hung out with Nielsen, and we got some rowdy boys going on in L.A. with May Pank. And I think she's the ringleader, but maybe not. But anyway, I want to know, were you at the Troubadour when Nielsen and John were messing with the Smothers Brothers and heckling? Oh, oh my God. I'm just curious. Uh, if looks I, like it. It looks were. like it. But I'm thrilled. That follow-up yeah, question. Yeah, there. you know, I turned around and I'm as, as, as there's Harry standing there going, yeah, and he's heckling them. And I turned around and he goes, come on, everybody, let's do it. And there's you know, Peter, Peter Lawford sitting there, Pam Greer, you know, Jack Haley Jr. And he's like, oh. come on, let's heckle them. And I'm like, and I'm grabbing him on this side going, stop it. Nobody wants this. And wow. he's getting drunk. And John's getting drunker because now the whole table's covered with Brandy Alexander. So this is now, a drunk. If you ever look happening. at a photo, you'll always see a bottle of Coca-Cola. That's me. That's my choice of drink. Okay. And I'm okay. sitting there going, Please, <laughs> Harry, stop. And I'm oh free. My. And so every time they would say, he goes, no, nah, they love it. And I said, no, they don't love it. I love it. And they would come. Ken Fritz came over and he tells John to stop it. And I'm going, why don't you talk to the guy who's the ringleader who's on this side of me? Harry but you Nielsen. know what? <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't make good copy at the end of the day. You got to go ah. to the guy who makes more noise, right? So John's standing there. And what happened while the table went nuts was Ken Fritz grabbed John by the uh, by the lapel. Uh-oh. Whoa. To grab him. And John like went, whoa, hold on. And he just, and he grabbed him like that and real tight and to try to stop. And, you know, John says, you don't need, to. and then the whole table went up. Wow. <laughs> so that's Dang. what happened. Wow. He's right. So, <laughs> You sound like, in a way, you're like the ringleader of a circus. That's Bob going has on. you as he, Bob. He, he, I know he's pinning me right in the air. Because you know, this is what we've always wondered about this kind of stuff. It just took her so long to tell us. But anyway, who did that? I'm curious about this. I know John's going to make an album, a couple albums while he's with you. Yes. And and you, oh, yes. you know, you're assigned to get this place. And he, I guess, if it's true, he gets the idea that. Him and Nielsen and Keith Moon and Ringo, and we should be living in the same house to make an album to bond, and you're going to get a place in Santa Monica. Now, you know, my mind sees you like maybe cooking eggs in the morning, and these guys are up he there to know who not being able eggs. to wake up. Who's taking care of everybody here? Is it you? 
I will tell you that I was the person that everybody came to for any problems. I they, that. I was because nobody else was capable uh, right. in that sense. Right. But we do. We did have uh, this couple. Our, uh, at the time, his name was Armando and Maria. This couple, and they took care of the house. So in the mornings they would they would make breakfast or anybody oh, okay. wanted to That's eat. Help. So they oh, did that. Oh, oh, so okay. We didn't have to do it, but you know we they um but they were sweet and to this day I know where they live now and wow. I and I have seen them so they're um and they're really uh, uh wonderful people and they moved and I and in fact this their son said to me. My parents said that they know you and that they used to work with John Lennon. And it said, I said, who are your parents? And he said, and he told me, and I said, he's right. He's not lying. He goes, are you kidding me? My parents knew John Lennon. Right. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. And, and Susan, do you have one? I, I oh, you go ahead. You keep going. Well, just this last one, I think maybe last one, but I want to know. So you got Keith Moon and Ringo and Nielsen and Lennon and, I want to know during this time doing music together, is there truly love in this group with each other? Is it more competition with each other in this group? Is it jealousy? Is it what's driving what's driving all of this? You know what? They have they had a love for each other. They Good. really did. That's great and this is them. where we had Paul. This was the the first time that John had seen Paul and I took one of the last photos of John and Paul together at this beach house and um, people couldn't believe it they yeah. were you know he showed up and it was it was funny because uh, Paul was at the piano you know there's Keith Keith is on one side of my of our bedroom and Ringo is on the other side but you know <laughs> and we were downstairs and everybody's wandering around Mal Evans would come during the day and all the other uh, musicians so our house was, the house was just filled with everyone. But I remember Paul being at the piano and you hear this little girl going, dad, dad, I believe it was Mary. And she goes, yes, Mary. And he goes, are you some kind of pop star? <laughs> oh, oh, no, for real? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was the cutest thing in the world when that. Yeah, when yeah. That the age of revelation, the age of revelation. Yeah. yeah. In a so, sense, baby. Can I ask? I, I'm I'm curious if you attended any of the Gold Star Spectre sessions, uh, recording sessions. <laughs> that was another nightmare. Okay, that one was really tough because here we are. John didn't want. We had just come off of the 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 Mind Games album, and John just said, "I want to just do an album because he had so much energy." He says, "I want to do one of the albums where I just want to be a singer in the band, right? No, no headache. I don't want to produce. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to think. Just put me in front of a mic and let me sing." <laughs> so, so Phil said, "You sure you're going to let me be the 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 producer, and I have full control." He said, yeah, up. yeah, yeah. And I went, oh, okay. boy, something's telling me I don't know if this is going to be good. Because uh -oh. in the past, um, you know, Phil was never the full producer. They had they also had control. So I said, no, 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 I don't want to be anything. You do it. So the first night, he didn't even tell John. The, the, the only thing that John required was, OK, I'll let you have everything you want except the engineer. I need to have my engineer in. OK, so we brought in Roy Sakala, who owned the record plant out on the East Coast. We know and Roy. Was, he did our, Roy did our second album with us. Roy right. Sakala. That's and great. And he was that was John's engineer. In spite of what everybody else was saying, this one or that one. It's Roy. So Roy comes out with a young, inexperienced uh, production assistant because everybody else uh, was taken. Jimmy Iovine. So he comes oh, wow. in. Yeah. So he comes in and they have a setup for eight because, you know, the way Phil was talking, about, we'll do a setup for eight. Well, we didn't know everybody was coming and saying Phil Spector session, Phil Spector session. So we had 27 musicians on the first night. Yeah. And everybody wow. scrambling like to yeah. now put put this together. I mean, we had three, three, uh, uh, three electric, two acoustic, uh, two basses. 
the le- the leader who was counting out in the studio was Jeff Barry. Oh, we had Jeff part Barry. of the Wrecking Crew, yeah. which of course, which was at that time was Leon Russell, and and Barry Mann playing piano again yep. on on the other oh, side man. of each other. We had Hal Blaine and Jim Keltner as the drummers. Carol K. Uh, there. The, um, uh, what was it? Uh, oh God, the Fifth Avenue Sax play. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Nino Temple on the Fifth Avenue Sax. And it was, and John was even more thrilled that there was Pete Condoli, who was one of the horn players from Johnny Carson, because <laughs> Pete Carson was John's favorite favorite show. Okay. And he never <laughs> met the man. Never you never met Johnny? Wow. Remember when the Beatles came to America and they were announcing Apple and they went to New York? It was Joe Garagiola who was the sub host that night. Oh, and, my gosh. And I just remember John, you know, as a kid, remember seeing it and he turns, he goes, and he goes, I don't have the Beatles. And he goes, and he goes, who are you? <laughs> uh, you go back to Barley, look, you'll are, see that. who are you not <laughs> yeah <laughs> so he never yeah. got a chance to meet uh, Johnny Carson but he loved the show wow mm-hmm. that is crazy I, I so can I ask you this during your 18 months I, I guess John called it the lost weekend because I, I was wondering where'd that come from this is hardly yeah. a weekend curious well you know it got to the point first off he, he sort of had to sort of say something But, you know, and then he got tired of everybody's talking about his drunken craziness. Uh And if you really read it, it's only like three incidences and they keep bringing it up over and over. So he finally got tired of saying it. So he finally said, it's like a lost weekend. And he's referencing the movie with Ray. Yeah, yeah. Well, during this time, during this time, you're, you're so close with him now. That you, and I'm wondering just mo- what motivated you to do this because you're going to trigger Julian, who he hasn't seen in like years. You're sitting there somehow in your brain, you're looking at the situation, going, "Yeah, I think Julian is needed here." I mean, how do you come up with that and 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 get him there? And Paul too. Hey, John, I think you should call Paul. I mean, this stuff. I read this stuff what? and I go. You're telling John Lennon to call Paul McCartney and make up or something. It's like you're becoming a little. Like, what's in your head? What's going on? You're going to help, right? I'm going to do as much as I can because he had not seen, quote, his brothers. Okay? That's the other boys. Yeah. He hadn't seen Julian. And he needed to see these people. And it was very important to me that he sees his family. And that was one of the 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 things for me was trying to make it work. And on top of that, there was no closure for Julian, uh, not for not so much Julian, but Julian's mom, Cynthia. Yeah. Cynthia and John didn't have closure after they split up. So it was time that that, for Julian's sake, that I thought it was important that they got together. And, um, and so all this was just coming all at once because we couldn't hold back. Uh, when I was working for them, Julian would be calling and I wasn't allowed really to talk about julian so much wow. you know to yeah. john so mm-hmm. i was now in a in a position to be able to do something yeah and that's what i wanted to do well you know what i should tell people this that in you can read this if you talk to julian and and you ask him hey what were the best years of your life he's going to say that the happiest time he had was those months those that time when you reeled him in over there into california and re- oh, i guess that's, re- that's re- a beautiful him. legacy oh yeah. He's a uh, um so when you good job, when you, May. Oh, yeah, May. thank you. But you know what? It was important. It's like you don't want uh I didn't want John to go through the rest of his life not really knowing his son. Yeah, no regrets. No regrets. Yeah. When you don't you want reached, that. And when so, you reached out when you reached out to Julian, what, what was his reaction to you that this could happen? Was he excited? Did he resist it a well, little? Well, I knew that certain things had already started and he was so thrilled. Oh, How old was he, May? 10. Oh, oh good age. Yeah. Good move. And that's an important age. And, you know, and uh, it was difficult be at first because John's always saying, you know, he was so nervous about Cynthia being there. And I mm. said, listen, guy, you haven't talked, you haven't seen your son. You need to just sit back. I'll handle it. 
you know, and yeah. we'll make it all work so that it yeah. will all be comfortable for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I've done, I understand that. I understand. And that yeah. was uh, a good thing. And mm -hmm. it made it so that the next time Julian came or any time that, um, that Cynthia uh, called, John wasn't freaked out. Nice. Anymore. He didn't have that, oh. oh my God, you know, this type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, man, so, all right. So how does this thing come crashing down? And I, that's what I want to know. And I need to know this. Can we ask this? I can. Like, did you care about John beyond just the situation? And was it getting to where you cared about him too much? And was it getting too deep? Or was this just a thing you knew you were doing and you were kind of in that mindset? Well, let's put it this way. I think when people see the movie, they'll understand it a little bit more and that okay. you're going to have to wait to good, good, good. I like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. And so, but when will we be able to see it, man? Yeah. Well, Let's this is, we're that. hoping by the end of this summer, there'll be in the streaming service that okay. uh, everybody can then get it and see it. And tell us I, what it is called. And it's called the lost weekend, a love story. Aww. Okay. Well, yeah, it sounds like it was. I mean, yeah. on many levels, you know. I mean, we all interact with each other. We hey, all have a ripple effect. Loving John in 1983 was your book, your first book anyway. Right. About yes, that was my people. first book. And then uh came out later as uh, John Lennon, The Lost Weekend. But it was encompassing, you know, it's a smaller a photo. paperback photo. type thing. But it's the same book. Um, But on the... What was it? Then I, in 2008, I put out Instamatic Karma, which was all the photos. Right, yes. right, right. Okay, cool. one last question. I swear this is my last question, okay? It's because, okay, Bob. I'll well, listen, you. I want to know about the recording session where you whispered the name John. Oh, yeah. I did it on stage. Too. Yeah, he I told know. them. I told them. Yeah, so, I mean, what's going on? You're in the booth, the you're just kicking back. What's going on? I'm in the other room, you know, going over my, uh, what was it, in the studio. I'm I'm doing the, the paperwork, as it were, you know. And I hear uh, somebody says, John needs you. I said, what? What does he need me for? So I go running in, and Roy and John are looking at me, and I'm going, what's going on? <laughs> you know, I don't trust you guys. You got that look I don't trust. Yeah. He goes, you need to go out there. And I look out into the studio and there's a, a, you know, a stand, the mic, headphones, and it's all like just, it's all dark except for this one spotlight. Okay. And I went, Intimidating oh, no. enough. <laughs> you know, and I'm going, what? He goes, just go out there. That's all I got. Just go out there. So I said, okay. And he goes, you're going to have to say some stuff. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, get out there. And so John says, you need to be out there. I said, all right. And that's when he said, he goes, now you got to whisper my name. I said, what? So he told me what the premise was. And I went, oh, God. And I was just so nervous. And he goes, even though <laughs> you're just saying John, I had to make it almost so whispery and, and, and almost, in a sense, almost sexual. And yeah, like, sultry. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no. Good so I did. And uh, and that's and that was fine. And then later on, I got invited back where it was me, Lori Burton, who was Roy's uh, uh, wife, um, great songwriter, too. So it was me, Lori, John and this kid, Joey Dambra. So the four of us did the background vocals as well. That, that came that those words came to John in a dream. Oh, wow. And wow. tell me what they are. It's cool. All he had, he doesn't know what it is, but he heard them in his. Yeah, it sounds like gibberish. Right. It's gibberish. And it's all abawakawa puse puse. And he says, I don't know what it means, but that just came to him when he was sleeping. Interesting. Voices. Very interesting. Now, I would like to know, do you still have your radio show? No, I, I had to stop because I was, although people want me to do podcasting, I said, Later on, I'm just I'm right now. I'm like trying to catch up on so many different things. Too much going yeah. on. Yeah, too much going. But I am doing my photo exhibition. OK, tell us about so, that. Yeah, cool. I'm doing uh, all those photos that you would see in the movie, all the photos okay. like in the book. 
and, so, oh, and then some wow. are, are being sold and you can purchase them. So I'm on May 18th, um, not 18th, the 19th, 20, 21st, I'll be in um, New Hope, Pennsylvania. And this is like my tour. How like fun. you guys, nice. are to, this will be my tour now. Yeah. I'm going to awesome, different May. cities. I'm, and I just found out that there's a theater, the, the owner of the Arete Gallery loved my movie so much. She went back two other times. Oh, like wow. One other time, something like that. She kept going back and the theater said, They've been showing it on the weekends in New Hope, and they said each weekend it got bigger. <laughs> there were more people That's coming awesome. through. Wow, That's awesome! Exciting. Now, when you say you're going to appear, do they show the documentary and then you interact with? Q and A's. What? What are you? Yeah, that's what I did when I was doing uh, at the uh, cool. Angelica. I came back. I was only supposed to do two. I ended up doing six, and they oh, kept yeah. extending my stay of the movie. So the movie was actually at the Angelica in New York City for two oh. weeks. Wow. wow yeah. Now, wow. since we haven't seen it yet. I don't want to bog you down with further questions. You're not going to but, answer anyway. No, but I want to know, do you cover the jaw-dropping moment Yes. When, when John Lennon's wife picks you and tries to talk you into, against your better wishes, by the way, which was correct and dead on. Like, what are you talking about? No. But uh, And then I, I just want to know, as it, it's stretching to 18 months, certainly at one point, didn't you think that this might be... A, this is it. This is what what is going to happen. Did you always think that the axe is going to drop? This is going to end. I don't know when or how, and it did. You're going to have to see the movie. <laughs> I knew she was going to say that. I wanted to set it up. I wanted to set it up for that. Okay. Well, good job, Bob. God, we're going to get into all the movie. May, we could keep you here forever, but we're going to let you go. Um, you want to say anything? anything else you want to let us know about? Oh, listen! I hope everybody comes out to to see the uh, my uh, the when the movie comes out at the end of the yeah. summer. If there, some places are still playing it. Like this coming next week, it's in Florida. Um, um, and they can Johnson find online it. where it is. Yeah. little pockets around the country. Right, little pockets. Well, God, it, yeah, I found out that there's some streaming services down at the end of the uh, summer, and and for all the exhibition, they can go on my site. Uh, to find out where I'm appearing or, you know. Okay. Or, you what know, is your site? And I yeah. hope we catch up, you guys. We're gonna. You're gonna be on the road, I would assume. Oh, yeah, we head yep. out in June or end of May. Yes, maybe there'll be a place that we're both in the same spot. That would yes, be, yes. That would be a lot of fun. We'll yeah, because then I then you can ask me privately about some things. Yeah, then we might get some scoop, but we're not getting it here. It's just <laughs> out in a movie for crying out loud. Hey, you people look for this uh, this documentary. It's it's a yeah. great story. It really is. And a what if can we love we love you, May? It, we're so glad that we're, we've all become such great pals. Yeah, yes. I yeah, love you guys. Cool. You know, I talk about you guys all the time. God bless you, have, May. We yes. still remember cool. the. We still remember the chiller autograph weekend we spent together. And we met. Where we met. And you there was you were with your table down there to our it left. It was May to the left, Tony Orlando to the right. And and by the yeah. end of that week, we were kumbaya and the whole <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was it. It was great. I did not go this year. I did not go. I've I've been away from it for about five years already. We have also. Yeah. We have also yeah. busy, busy, yeah, we, busy, man. We got to do something about that. I'm gonna tell them we should do something again. That's fine. Sounds good. I would stand at our table looking over at hers going, this is as close to John Lennon as I've ever been in my <laughs> He's impossible. entire life. And it and it is. It, I love it. I love it. When you yeah. see the movie, when you finally get the chance to see the movie, privately, you could ask me any question you want. Oh, it's fun. Oh, listen, some, he will, he'll make some little gaps, Miss Pang. I think you can help me with that. Pog's yeah, in there going. I'll be taking notes. I know, I, I, I know, I know you, May. brother. I know, May. I know. And then you'll have to come save me, Susan. I got you, girl. Uh -huh. I can I can corral these people. I got this. Okay. Well, listen, yeah. May, right, Pang, May Pang made May and May 1st a special day for all of us. Yeah, and Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, love May. You, honey. I love you guys. Okay. See, ya. see you, brothers, later. I'll see you guys later. Bye, casters. Okay. Bye. Bye.